Hi, my name is Danny Fenton and I'm an aeromodeler and an engineer. Join me on a fascinating journey where I'll show you some of the techniques used in scale aeromodeling. Hello modelers and welcome back to the workshop. Today we're going to be looking at the empennage which is the tail feathers or the tail plane elevators, fin and rudder. Now as you know this is a free flight model so the fin and rudder and the elevators and tailplane are not separated. You're supposed to build them as one piece as a free flight model. So in this video I'll show you how to build the, the two parts and then add some structure that you can then separate the parts. Okay, so enjoy the video.
Now, that's as far as we can go with this in its standard form. <clears throat> I can't add these yet because I now need to add the outline of the elevators so that I can split the parts. Okay, so I'll go and find some more wood and then we'll look at how we're going to lay that out. That's an interesting piece of wood. This is my 1 8 by 1 16th that was provided in the kit. As you can see, 16th square at one end and 16th square at the other end and 1 8 wide in the middle. So I don't know what's happened there, but I think it, it slipped when it was in the machine. So that piece is useless. However, well, actually the middle piece is all right. I'm going to, you, I've shown you this command stripper before many times. What I need is some more 1 8 by 16 Not only to replace this bit that's, that's incorrect, but I needed a couple more pieces, a couple more strips. So all I do is I put it into the tool until the blade just binds a bit like that, maybe a little bit opened. There we go. So I know that's 1 8 wide. And then I've got some, some scrap 16th here, which is the, the sheet that um, a lot of the parts came out of. So I'm just, I'm just going to see if I can get some parts out of that. So that's got me a piece of 1 8 by 16 and this piece was particularly hard and I actually need some hard for this so um, so that's good. I don't think I'm going to get another one out of that but let's go and see if we've got another sheet that we can mix some from. That's probably just the one more strip would, would do. This is another, this is 335A and let's see if we can Sneak a bit out of the edge of this. There we go. And that should give us another piece of sixteenth by one eighth. Not quite as hard that sheet. So not a problem. Okay. So back to the bench. Because what you must do is you must get these angles right. You must get the fit really good. Because if you don't, you, the, the joint won't be strong. What you've got to be very careful of is that you don't distort the frame. That part needs to fit without forcing this part. And as you can see, it's just moved it a little bit. It's just fractions that you need to take off. So what I'll do is I'll fill in the rest. Okay, so that's both sides done. What we need to do now is these corners are very very weak. What we need to do is we need to add reinforcing pieces. 
<clears throat> and these are just made from some of the scrap pieces that we've got. This is where it gets exciting and where you need a fresh scalpel blade. We use a number 11 for this. These are a number 3 handle. This is a number 4 handle. And the number 11s go in a number 3. 21s, 23s go in the 4. So what we're going to do is we're going to try and cut away I'm going to use a saw for some of it, cut away the elevators. Now I need some scrap wood for this to do the work on. That's a convenient piece. Then you go to the midpoint of those two pieces there. got a new blade for a reason and this is it. Now we need to come over to this section here. Now the way the, the shape of the tailplane on the full size chippy, this is a 90 degree bend. So I'm just going to draw a line where I want to make my cut. What I'm going to do is leave at an eighth along there. Now you can see why we added these extra two pieces. Uh, 
I think I'm going to add a gorgeous gusset in there. I can see this being slightly weak right on that joint. Okay. Now, with any luck, prevailing wind, we should be able to split these two sections fairly easily. It will invariably have become slightly glued. It shouldn't be too bad to split them out. This is why we needed the sharp blade. There we have our elevator separated away from the tailpipe. But I do need to put a quarter gusset in there, a little piece. Just in there, like that. So let's pin that down because it's moving. It's wriggling. Good. So there we have the elevator. Now what I'm going to do, before I go any further, is get it all tangled in the plan. With my pen, I'm just going to put a little dot there and a little dot there. Now that tells me that that joint goes to that joint because when we make two, we might get them muddled up. And if it's not perfectly symmetrical, then they may not may not work. Okay, I'll cut the other side out and uh, we'll take it from there.
So I'm not wishing to teach you to suck eggs here, <clears throat> but the way I do this is I get the uh, trailing edge right on the edge of my building board. So it's just overhanging a little bit, just support it. And then I, I sand with a block. But what you mustn't do is have the block perpendicular to the ribs because they'll catch. So what you have to do is angle it. So it's all, you're always presenting a diagonal line to what you're sanding okay that way you stand a better chance of not snagging a rib or a corner or an edge no guarantees and i hate to think of the number of times i've had to glue bits back on that have fallen off or i've snapped off the trailing edges are horrible to do on little models like this and now you see why making those joints so good 
works so well. So when the judges look at that, even though it's got tissue on it, they'll still see that, that joint. And you'll get extra marks for good joints. Kit scale, one of the things they look at is the quality of the joints and the build, you know, the build quality. So get those bits right and you'll uh, you'll get get extra points. One of the nice things about this kit is, or one of the useful things about it, is the, the trailing edge is laminated from two pieces. So you can see where the midline is and you can know where to sand up to. Again, how much you've profiled the surfaces counts a lot towards your kit scale score. If you've not rounded any anything off at all, then you won't score very well. You've got to get it. You've got to prove to the to the judges that um, you know what you're doing. <laughs> Hard for me because <laughs> half the time I don't. <laughs> anyway, here we go. This sanding block has a coarse side and a fine side. Just switch into the coarse side. Plenty of time for more sanding later, but I just thought I'd um, include a little bit in this section of the video so you can see how it, how it works. You've just got to be really gentle and really careful. There we have it. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video. It was uh, fun to make. It's a very fun little model to build, and if you've never done a a small free flight model. It's, um, it teaches you some skills that are very useful for the bigger models. Um, and I'm, I'm a big advocate of people or modelers trying all sorts of different things, you know, uh, indoor, outdoor, free flight, control line. I, I really feel it rounds off your modeling ability if you dabble in all the other sort of genres. Anyway, there we go. I hope you've enjoyed the video. I don't know what we'll do next. I'll think of something. If you enjoyed it, click like and subscribe. Thank you.